Hello, everyone. Welcome to our LAMP basics or the TCM and acupuncture basics for beginners. We are now on episode 60. And uh, let's start our session with the first one. Let's welcome Sergino Pinheiro of Legazpi City. Good afternoon, Sergino. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon. Sposta lahat. Now we go to the water element here. Associated emotion, fear. Sabi ng author, I was once asked at a lecture if the five elements had no good emotions. Joy is the only positive emotion. All the rest are so negative. Why is that? Well, I ask you, what is a good emotion? Is fear a bad emotion? Would a humankind have evolved so far into history if we did not feel fear, and learn to protect ourselves from the dangers in life. We would have been instinct uh, long ago. I believe every emotion is healthy and ha has a purpose in our life, as long as it warns us to take care but does not make us abnormally hyperactive or para paralytically passive. Fear, when it becomes a problem, stems from kidney imbalance, usually deficiency. Depending on which aspect of the kidney is deficient, fear manifests differently. Kidney indeficiency is a young dominant state. The patient has young symptoms when in fear. These symptoms could manifest in the kidney and urinary bladder directly, or they could attack other weak and vulnerable organs, causing other symptoms. The symptoms are manifesting in organs other than the water element. It is necessary to treat both elements. Kidney indeficiency is a yin dominant state. The patient so shows passive fear or phobia, which limit their activity. If they are afraid of flights, they will not fly. If they are fearful of the dark, they will not venture out in the dark. This fear, again, could manifest in symptoms of organs not related to the water element, in which case what elements must be treated. So we have here the active fear, which is the kidney. There is deficient yin and normal yung yang. Fear will not stop them from doing anything, but they could be very tense and suffer symptoms of overactivity of the symptomatic nerve system, sympathetic nerve system, tension, tachycardia, nervous urination, restlessness, and turning red, hyperventilation. So treatment, we use do 20 PC6, and, and other tranquilizing point. Kidney 7, spleen 6, rent 3, tonifying yin. Treat the symptomatic organ. Next, a passive fear, which is also sa kidney, there is deficient yang normal ang yin. Fear will not stop them from attempting any activity that causes the fear or being in a situation that frightens them. If they are forced to do so, they could faint, pass urine, feels the legs, turns to jelly, and become pale. Sub points, we use UB23. Kidney 3, you beat 67 to tonify the young. Tonifying young or symptomatic organ exposure to situation of fear. Treatment of fear is threefold. Tonify the kidney deficiency. Treat the organ that manifests symptoms at the time of fear. Treat the organ associated with the object of fear. Tonify kidney deficiency. If the fear makes the patient more passive, tonify kidney yang. If the fear makes them tense and nervous, but they go through the activity and suffer the symptoms anyway, tonify kidney yin. If they are in fear all the time, not for special situations only, then tonify both kidney yin and yang. 
treat the organ manifesting symptoms during fear. You, urinary bladder frequent and urgent urination, REN3, UB40, spleen 6, and kidney 4. Large intestine, nervous diarrhea, stomach 25, lung 7, LI5, and heart 5. Heart, if there is a tachycardia, REN14, PC6, heart 5, and kidney 7. Lungs, hyperventilation, lung 1, REN17, PC6, and lung 7. Stomach, if there's a vomiting or butterflies in the stomach, REN12, PC6, spleen 21, and stomach 43. All these points treat a hyperactive yang in these organs. So sa hyperactive yang, there is an excess of yang and deficient yin. Treat the organ associated with the object of the fear. What is the person afraid of? This opens another imbalance, perhaps in the kidney or in another organ. This needs to be treated as well. A list of common fears and possible imbalances with treatment is given in this table. So sa darkness, water, organ is kidney. There is less or deficient kidney, uh, uh, deficient yang, normal ang yin. We use UB23, kidney 3, UB67. Next, confined spaces, lift, traffic jam, underground. Organ is lung. There is excessive yang, deficient yin. We use LI2 sedation, lung 1, and lung 7. So open spaces, organ is lung. There is deficient yang, normal ang yin. We use UB13, LI11, lung 10. Insects, crawling insects, organ is lung. There is deficient yin, normal lang yang. Lung 1, lung 9, REN 17. Aggression, the organ is liver. There is normal yin, deficient yang. UB18, GB43, and liver 4. Next, illness, death. We have the organ of kidney. Both yin and yang are deficient. We use kidney 7, UB23, UB67. Authority, the organ is lung. There is normal yin, deficient yang. UB13, LI11, lung 10. Next is losing an opportunity. The organ is heart. There is deficient yin, excess of yang. Do 20, REN 14, and HEART 5. Next is paranoid, suspicious, the organ is spleen. There is normal blood and deficient chi. UB 20, spleen 1, stomach 36, REN 12, MOXA. Energy giving colors, blue and black. These are the colors of the sky and the sea, a very large part of nature. Blue is a color, cooling color, and the dark black, dark black of the sky is a very relaxing color. Work suits are generally of these colors, so this conform with what working people wear. I may also trust my financial advisor if they sat before me in a yellow and pink suit to tell me how to invest my money. Doctors seem to prefer these colors too, as many medical publications and books for doctors have blue covers, so this mask had been the color which is most, most attractive, uh, attractive to them. Although the deeper, darker shades are more relaxing, shiny black is an erotic color. Metallic blue and silver are colors of fashionable establishment and cars. The clear sky blue on the sunny day can make us want to spend every minute of it outdoors. Gray or blue color on, on the face, under the eyes, on the tongue is a sign for some type of kidney deficiency and other factors determine the nature of the deficiency. Just as liking and disliking colors give us an idea about the excess and deficiency states, we could use colors to bring energies to a deficiency situation. For instance, a child who has night terrors wakes up wakes up screaming, 
bites and attacks the mother who tries to pacify will sleep much better with a blue night light close to the floor. Man with a high-powered job and hypertension and who feels hot will receive constant kidney and tonification with a blue carpet on the office floor and blue painting on the wall facing him at work. As heat and young symptoms tend to ascend, the blue color should be on or close to the floor to try to descend it. Blue colors should be avoided in cold disorders. Pastel blue and metallic colors will activate kidney yang and could be used moderately. The more suitable shades in cold disease are pinks and red. Associated flavor, salty. Just as all the other flavors, salty foods increase kidney yang, so as a craving for salt. Indicates yang deficiency and a dislike for salt indicates yang excess. The bad news about salty food is that it is not always good for one. For instance, a patient suffering from poor kidney function with water retention and oliguria should take less or no salt. But because the kidney yang is, is deficient, he or she will crave salt. Pa patients who are very dry because they do not drink very much should consume more salt as it would make them more thirsty and help to hold more water in the body. But they do not crave salt. We have to advise them to consume more salt. Associated climate cold. The climate cold is the pathogenic factor that attacks the kidney and urinary bladder more than any other climatic factors. Cold increases yin and attacks yang. When kidney yang becomes deficient, the cold can penetrate to the deeper parts, injuring the bones and joints, the internal organs, and the reproductive system. In kidney yang deficiency, the patient feels cold when it is not cold, and the feeling of cold is in the deep parts, <clears throat> whereas the skin may not be cold to touch. Other parts of the body may be affected by the cold or may feel cold. This could be related to other organs. For instance, cold hands only may be due to coldness in the upper warmer, heart, <coughs> or lung, mostly the heart. Cold extremities, hands, feet, and nose, ears could be because of spleen yang def deficiency. Damp cold in the lungs can cause asthmatic breathing with excessive white mucus that worsen at night and in the cold weather. Coldness of the kidneys manifests mainly in the feet, legs, and low back. <clears throat> it retards the function of the urinary system and reproductive organs and causes stiffness and pain in the joints during rest. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. We now proceed to wood element, the concept. Okay, let's talk about the secretion of liver, which is the tears. This should not be confused with the emotional tears of weeping. The tears as a secretion of the liver are only for lubricating the eyes and to protect them from dust and other impurities. When liver yin is deficient, the eyes tend to be very dry. This can make them very sensitive and be a cause of recurring conjunctivitis. When tonifying liver yin, we should also check if there is also an underlying kidney yin deficiency. If so, it is more important to tonify kidney yin and to drink water. In liver yin excess, one tends to have excessive lacrimation for no obvious reason. In liver yin and yang deficiency, patients tend to have both dryness and excessive lacrimation, albeit at different times. Liver nourishes nails. The nails get their nutrition and strength from liver yin and blood, and their shine and speed of growth from liver yang. In a yin or blood deficiency state, the nails become dry, rigid, and uneven, tending to split easily. The nail beds tend to become red and angry, 
And there is a tendency towards frequent nail bed inflammation in liver yang excess. Associated emotion of the liver is anger. All emotions have their good and bad aspects. If life was to be without aggressions, it would not have begun in the first place. The moment of birth is associated with much aggression and shouting, with the mother, doctor, and the baby all screaming. If the baby does not use aggression against the mother who carried him in her womb, in his in her womb all these months, it would not be born. If a seedling does not burst through the skin of the seed, or if the chick does not break its shell, they would die at their moment of birth. Anger and aggression are emotions that give us the power to fight for our rights. If not, other people could walk all over us. It is also a question of our self-worth. But if anger was the first emotion in every case, no matter what the case might be, it would show liver imbalance. During a moment of aggression, when shouting, attacking another person, either verbally or physically, and being very tense, the liver yang rises very high. Similarly, a person who has excessive liver yang would act in an aggressive way. Even if they want to simply say to the other person that they love them, it sounds as if they wish to kill them. How soon should people get angry? How well can they control themselves when they are angry? This depends on the liver yin. Just as a kettle with little with less water would come to the boil quicker and burn if it continues to boil with little water, a person with less liver yin would get angry and lose control of themselves easily when angry. When an irritated, exhausted housewife or mother complains that she is losing her temper with her children and feels guilty later, she needs help. She needs tonification of her liver yin. In liver yang deficiency, one has problems getting angry, even in a deserving situation. There is even a fear of encountering aggressive situations, especially in a combined kidney yang deficiency, even when these are not targeted at them. By the time such people feel anger, the person who made them angry has long left the scene. Others are quicker to react, but are left frustrated with a lot of unvented anger. It is interesting to note that their voice gets softer when they feel anger. This anger that they swallow makes them feel frustrated, blocks their energy, and makes them ruminate over and over again about the issue. They become introverted, internally tense, and show the aggression in passive ways. When they Finally, when they get to the point when they cannot contain it anymore, they become very aggressive or go into a manic phase following the depression. Thank you so much for your attention. Let's now call Mamlin Galerita for wood element diseases. Good afternoon, Mamlin. Good afternoon, Dr. Hector. Good afternoon, everyone. We're still on the diseases of wood element. We're on our sixth installment. So we have already discussed about headaches and epilepsy last time. Today we have a new topic, a very interesting one, which is fibromyalgia. So fibromyalgia is a very common problem, mostly among middle-aged women. It is a typical B syndrome caused by obstruction of blood and chi in the exterior meridians and collaterals. Uh, this involves the tendinomuscular meridians. These blocks are caused by exterior climatic factors or interior heat, cold, wind, and damp. Exterior obstruction could happen due to too much exposure or a deficient young chi whereby uh, our protecting energy, especially in the lung function of opening and closing the skin pores. So the main symptoms of fibromyalgia are pain and muscle tension, leading to restriction of movement. Associated symptoms are malaise, depression, low energy, irritability, and insomnia. The treatment 
for fibromyalgia is twofold. One, uh, treatment uh, treating the pain, and second is treatment of the person. This should be the treatment principle for any chronic pain syndrome. The treatment will fail or the improvement will be short-lived when only the pain is considered and not the circumstances of the person who is suffering the pain. If the person was treated for a general energy problem or emotional state, then they would feel better even if the pain is still present. This is why doctors prescribe antidepressants and they sometimes work until the side effects begin. So below is a list of the features for us to easily differentiate the, uh, between the four types of muscle and tendon pain and the general treatment principles, okay? So we have here first, um, hot pain. Hot pain presents with severe pain, usually local, radiating, or superficial, and may be hot or inflamed. There is tension in muscle and it's difficult to move. Hot pain usually worsens during activity and better with rest. So for its treatment principle, we use uh, to cool the area, um, rest and for uh, we immobilize the area for a short period of time. So this will enable for the area to for the inflammation in the area to subside. So we also direct apply direct maxibustion or hot needles. Uh, using continuous frequency, 10 hertz for 20 minutes. Or we could use um, bloodletting, or we bleed locally or distally. In needling, we, we use more uh, distal points and less local points. So in um, general needling principle or general treatment principle here is tonify the liver in and sedate the young. Second pattern is cold pain. So in cold pain, there is dull, constant, deep, or maybe cold. There is also tension in muscle due to cold and inactivity. The pain worsens with rest and in bed and better during activity. So for the treatment principle, we apply warm, we exercise, and do massage. So we could also use acupuncture with electrical stimulation on the needles for electroacupuncture. Um, in choosing the acupuncture points, we use more local and less distal points. So with cold pain, we tonify the liver yang and sedate the yin. Okay. The third pattern here is um, damp pain. In damp pain, there is stiffness and pain in muscles and tendons. Uh, the pain is fixed, a fixed loci, and worse on starting to move from rest, improves over two to three hours of activity. Uh, damp pain can have also hot or cold symptoms. And damp pain could also present with edema in pain areas, pain on sitting or lying in the pain area. There is heaviness and it is worse when in wet weather. As for the treatment principle, uh, we use lo both local and distal points and we also apply salt or do salt baths. Local cupping or cupping massage could also be used. For the diet, uh, we advise to avoid fat, milk, and refined carbohydrates. For the acupuncture points, uh, we could use stomach 40 and spleen 9 for dampness. For the fourth pattern, we have wind pain. 
This will this is characterized by wandering pains in muscles and tendons. Uh, it is different loci at different times. There is general tenderness in muscles and tendons. It can also have hot or cold symptoms. There is aversion to wind and irritability. So for the treatment principle, we eliminate, uh, we use wind elimination point with tech, um, clearing uh, technique, wind elimination point technique. We use moxa or electrical stimulation for the diet. Um, patients with wind pain are advised to avoid alcohol, sour, and acidic food. So here we tonify liver blood. Okay. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Lin. Let's now listen once again to Sir Dino Pinheiro for the metal element. Good afternoon once again, Sir Dino. Good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Now we continue with the diseases of the metal elements. First, uh, the constipation. Constipation is only a problem of the large intestine. Sabi ng author, if I have a patient who suffers with many problems of which constipation is one, it would be my primary concern to treat it first. If there is no pre-elimination of stool, it will cause many other stagnations and retention in the rest of the body. Treat the constipation effectively and many other symptoms will disappear without ever being treated. These are basically two types of constipation. First, we have the large intestine, excess yang, and deficient qi. Stools, once a week or so, patients feel full, heavy, lethargic, but has no urge to go to the toilet. Stools are rather large when they come, uh, not dry except at the beginning. There is abdominal distension in the evenings and not much wind. Patient has problem with elimination in general. Tongue is thick, white, forward, coating. Pulse is soft, slow, and wide. So treatment, we use LI4, stomach 25, triple warmer 6. Stomach 37, you with 25 LI11. <laughs> Excuse me. Paravertebral plum bosom topping from level L2 to level S4 until red skin reaction. Next, uh, LI. Next, our diagram, LI, decrease ang yin and there is normal yang. Stools daily may be more than once. Patients has often an urge to go to the toilet. Stools very small and dark like a rabbit stools. Not much distension can pass wind more so in the morning. Skin is generally dry. Tongue is dry or cracked. Pulse is thin and tense. So treatment, we use LI4, stomach 25, triple warmer 6, Stomach 37, LI5, lung 9, and kidney 10. Diseases of the metal elements. The following conditions had been covered earlier in the chapter. Excessive sweating, common cold, epistaxis, skin types and treatment, yin and yang diarrhea, yin and yang constipation, sadness and depression, claustrophobia, agoraphobia. A, a acute hay fever. So treatment, there are many successful methods for treating acute hay fever. The points I tend to use are, so my local points, this depends on where the patients feel most of their symptoms. First, the nose and sinuses. Um, <clears throat> extra point, one, the yin tongue, LI20, UB2, so throat, SI17, if there's a headache where it hurts, though they tend to hurt around the sinuses, 
LI4 area distal point, GB20, the most effective point, wind eliminating point for the head and face, especially when given with the appropriate wind elimination technique. Lung 6, sedation, cleft point. Use to sedate an organ in an acute situation with excess of yin or yang. Liver 6, sedation if eyes are itchy and red. C-cleft point and stomach party against excessive mucus. Ear acupuncture for the internal nose. We choose the lung endocrine, triple warmer, and the panings. This could be added in this area if this area is affected. Ideally, the treatment should begin with the earliest symptoms in, in the year and the patient treated daily for four sessions. If necessary, one or two week, two more weeks, two more weekly sessions could be added thereafter. The patient would be at least 50% better during the season. Of course, they must not try to push their luck by lying down and rolling on the grass to check how much better they could act. They actually are. If they follow some ground rules, sleeping with closed windows, not putting washing, especially bed linen, out to dry, using a dryer, washing their hair before going to bed if they had been outdoors, they will feel good. The following year, they should be treated with the same way, and this time they can be more adventurous. Treatment should be given for three years at the same time of the year, every year, to obtain complete cure. Next is chronic allergic rhinitis, a very common problem among our patients. The cause could be dust, dust mites, pollen, animals, chemicals, cosmetic products, and poor adaptation to climatic changes. It is also a difficult symptom to treat successfully because the protecting energy, which is the way chi, is rather low. Chronic rhinitis is an important cause of frontal headaches in patients, even if they do not complain of rhinitis. Once the rhinitis improves, the headaches also disappears. The treatment, the following local and distal points can be used in every case. LI20, extra point one, the Tai Yang, and GB20. Splint 10 for allergy, stomach 40 for mucus. In addition to this, we could give some other points to suit the patient's special imbalances. The five element diagram show, below shows the relationship of other organs to the lungs. So the five element diagram, there is a decreased heart yin, spleen chi, dampness, the lungs, skin yin, deficiency, dryness, liver yin, or blood with ascending wind. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. We call once again, Mom Lynn Galarita of Quezon City for the theory of Zangfu organs. Good afternoon, Ma'am Lynn. Good afternoon, Leto Hector. Good afternoon, everyone. So today we have a review of um, a, a topic which belongs to the TCM basics, the theory of Zangfu organs, okay? So what are these Zangfu organs? We have five Zang and six Fu organs. For the five zang, we have the liver, spleen, lung, kidney, and the heart. The pericardium is supposedly or a part of the heart. So we have only five zang organs. For the six full organs, we have the small intestine, the large intestine, the gallbladder, the stomach, the urinary bladder, and the sanjiao. So aside from the five zang and six full organs, we also have the extraordinary organs. We also have six, um, namely the brain, the marrow, the bone, the blood vessel, the gallbladder, and the uterus. So the gallbladder, aside from being a full organ, is also considered as an extraordinary organ, okay? 
So how to divide the organs? The organs which are solid and containing essence, essence are considered the Zang organs. The organs which are empty, uh, receiving food, water, and passing waste are the Fu organs. The organs which are empty and containing essence are the extraordinary Fu organs, okay? So now we go to the Zang organs. First we have the heart. Let's start with the heart. Okay. Now let's start with the heart. The heart has the function of um, controlling blood circulation, taking charge of mental activities, um, it also controls sweat, controls blood vessels, and the pulse strength. It opens into the tongue and manifests in the face. Okay. Now we have problems with uh, problems of the heart. Um, if we have heart issues, we usually have palpitations and chest pain, a dream disturbed sleep, insomnia, or we could also have amnesia. Problems of the heart could also manifest with manic depressive psychosis, dementia, abnormal happiness, and sadness. There could also be aphasia and delirium, night sweats, pale or red complexion, irregular, irregular pulse, and overjoy, okay? Now we go to the liver. Liver has the function of soothing and regulating the flow of chi and blood, storing and regulating blood, and the liver has a relationship with the tendons, nails, and, and eyes. The liver um, is in charge of or associated with the emotion of anger. Okay. So for its soothing and regulating the flow of chi and blood function, the liver helps in the digestion of the spleen and stomach. Well, it helps the stomach and spleen in the, in the digestion of food. It also helps in the secretion of the gallbladder, and it relates to emotional activities. Okay. So what happens if there is a uh, dysfunction or disharmony in the liver? Uh, this will present with hy hypochondriac pain, a distending pain in the breast, lower abdomen, and the vertex. There also, there's also indigestion, depression, um, anger. There is abnormal, abnormal menstruation and abdominal masses. There could also be eye problems, weakness in limbs, and fragile nails. So each sang organ opens into a sense organ, indicating a close structural or physiological and pathological relationship between the internal organs and the sense organs. So for the heart, it opens into the tongue, the liver to the eye, the spleen to the mouth, the kidney to the nose, and the lung to the nose, and the kidney to the ears. So that's all for now. Hope you join us again in our next episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Ma'am Lynn. Let's call once again Sir Dino Pinheiro for another topic on the water element. Uh, good afternoon, Doc. Good afternoon po sa lahat. Now we continue with the water element, musculoskeletal pain. To treat a musculoskeletal pain in the best possible way, we need to ask the patient three questions. First, where is your pain? Second, how is your pain 
describe the pain and the factors that affect the pain. Number three, since how long have you had the pain? The answer to the first question will tell you where to treat. If the pain is in one or two meridians, you should treat the meridians with the pain. If the pain is in the urinary bladder, meridian or stomach meridian, then this meridian should be needle. If the muscles or tendon hurts on this meridian, then point GB34, the influential point for the muscles and tendons must be given. If the pain is on bone or cartilage, then UB11, the influential point for bone is given. If the problem is in the joints, then both UB11 and GB34 could be used. When the patient complains of pain in many joints, as in polyarthritis, then there is no point in asking them in which meridian they feel the pain. It is more helpful to find out which tissue is in pain. If the pain is in many muscles and tendons, as in fibromyalgia, we should treat it as an imbalance of the liver. If the bones are painful in general, as in osteoporosis, then kidney should be balanced. If many joints are affected, then both kidney and liver ought to be balanced. The rule of the thumb is given in the box below. One or two meridians affected, balance the meridian. Many meridians affected, treat the organ. The answer to the second question will tell you if it is a yin or yang dominant pain. In fact, the description of the pain would help us categorize the pain as one of four types of pain and treat it according to its special character. <laughs> First, we have the hot pain, inflammation, hot, red, and swollen joints, severe incapacitating pain, sharps and pulsating, radiating. Worse during activity, better with rest, but feverish, worse with longer activity, better with long rest. Next, a cold pain, cold, worse in cold, deep and diffused, constant muscle tension, joints feel tense and fixed until warm. Worse during rest and at night, better with movement, freezing easily. Worse with long rest, takes 10 to 15 minutes to warm up and feels better. Next is the fixed pain. There is edema, pressure pain, stiffness, limited mobility, fixed place of pain, numbness and heaviness of limbs. Worse at the beginning of movement after rest can be hot or cold. Worse after long of rest takes two, three hours after starting for the pain and movement to improve. Next is the wind pain. Wandering pain through all of body or with the limb, sudden severe episodes with free, with pain-free intervals, nature pain could change as well. And have either hot or cold character. Worse on exposure to wind or after sour food or alcohol. <laughs> So hot pain could be improved in cool weather, restless, and irritable. Treat locally with ice, short period of immobilization, rest, bleeding, or electrical stimulation. Few local and many distal points to draw energy away from local area. So cold pain, worse in cold weather, could improve in warm weather. Treat locally with heat, moxa, hot needles, massage, Exercise. Many local needles with few distal points to bring energy to affected area. Next, a fixed pain could be could worsen in damp weather and improve in dry weather. Also, refined sweet and fatty foods worsen the pain. Treat locally with capping, salt, cold teas, and moxa. There is no heat. Local and distal points, stomach 40 and spleen 9 against doctors. 
Next, a wind pain, cold wind improves in warm, warm weather, hot wind pains improve in cold weather. Wind pains worsen in spring. Treat locally with wind, wind eliminating points with wind sedation in wind heat and wind tonification in wind cold. No point in intensive local treatment as pain wonders. Need to balance liver. The answer to the third question will place the disease within a time frame, acute, subacute, recurrent, or chronic. So we know if we should tonify, sedate, or apply both tonification and sedation in order to balance the meridian or organ. If we are treating an acute pain of a young dominant nature, there is a young excess in the affected meridian or organ that should be sedated. But if the same type of pain has been there for over six months, chronic state, this would be a deficiency of being, which must be tonified. So in the author, I have given simple pictures to illustrate these imbalances states. Let us say that pain of heat and wind nature are young dominant and both cold and damp pains are yin dominant. Let us have a look at the eight stages of imbalances between yin and yang once again. So, so acute condition, 1 to 30 days, um, there is excess of yang. Next, tower diagram, uh, excess of yin. And the next is both excess yin and yang. This is excess states, uh, sedate excess. So subacute, 1 to 6 months or recurrent. There is deficient yin, excess yang. This is followed by excess yin, deficient yang. So excess plus deficiency, sedate plus tonify. So chronic condition over six months, there is normal yang, deficient yin. This is followed by normal yin, deficient yang. And followed by both uh, deficiency of yin and yang. So deficiency states, we need to tonify the de deficiency. In these eight stages of imbalance, there are three yang dominant stages and three yin dominant ones, and two stages which are both yin and yang dominated. With the help of the first question, we determine the meridian or organ we should be treating. With the description and causes for the pain, we would already have diagnosed whether it was hot, cold, fixed, or wind type, and would have chosen the appropriate local therapy for this. Now, with the third question, we can decide the correct energy balancing treatment for the meridian or organ. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Sir Dino. We now Proceed to Meridian Theory. Let's call Mam Lin Galarita of Quezon City once again. Good afternoon, Mam Lin. Good afternoon, Dr. Hector. Good afternoon, Ulet. So we continue our discussion on the extra meridians. We have already discussed about the Du and the Ren meridians. So for today, we'll discuss on the Yang motility and Yin motility meridians for the Yang Chow and the Yin Chow. Okay. Um, among the eight extra meridians, only the Ren and the Du meridians have their own points. All the other meridians flow through regular meridians, cutting through them and sharing common points with these meridians. The Yang motility meridian flows mainly on the lateral side of the body and cuts through many yang meridians. Its function is to keep the general yang energies of the body moving into the general yin energies of the body. So <clears throat> um, the common points of the yang motility meridian are the following. UB61, um, bladder 62, and bladder 59. We can find this on the uh, foot or the heel. So we also have GB29 on the inguinal area 
SI10, uh, LI15, and LI16. And then we have stomach four, three, and one on the face, and bladder one and GB20 at the nape. Uh, bladder one is near the eye. The confluent point of the young motility meridian or the young chow mai is UB62. Okay. So now we'll go to yin motility or the yin chow meridian. This meridian flows on the medial side of the leg onto the ventral side of the body and meets the young motility meridian at the feet and at point bladder one in the face. It cuts across and has common points with yin meridians. Its function is to keep the general yin, yin energies of the body in motion and moving towards the general yang energies of the body. Among the common points here are kidney six, kidney eight, bladder one, and the confluent point is kidney six. Okay. Uh, here is an illustration of the flow of the yin motility and the yang motility meridian, starting from the foot to the eye at point bladder one. Okay. The young, young motility meridians flows usually in the right side. The yin motility meridians on the left. Okay. Next. But in practice, this is not observed so strictly. The young motility meridian is used in any case where the patient is hot, restless, as many young dominant pains or skin problems, spastic paralysis or burning sensation. In these cases, the confluent point of bladder 62 is used. If any particular organ suffers from young dominant symptoms and it shares a common point with the young motility meridian, this common point could be used as well. For instance, Point stomach three or four could be added to bladder 62 in case of gastritis with acid reflux. The yin motility is used in general tiredness, dullness, coldness, or weakness, placid paralysis, or and numbness. In these cases, point kidney six is also used. This is the reason why um, point bladder 62 is a tranquilizing point and kidney 6 is referred to as the wake-up point. Bladder 62 moves the yang into the yin, thus increasing the yin and reducing the yang. Point kidney 6 moves the yin into the yang and thus reducing yin and increasing the yang. Okay. Another very important use of the yin and yang motility meridians is that they are used to balance the left and the right sides of the body. Often we see patients complaining of one-sided problems such as pain on all, or on all of one side or weakness on one side. If the problem on one side was of a young nature, then point bladder 62, the confluent point of yang motility could be used on the affected side to move the yang energies from the excess side to the deficient side. In hemiplegia of a, spast of a spastic nature, point UB62 can be used on the side of the paralysis. If the one-sided symptoms are of a yin nature, then point kidney six of the yin motility meridian may be used. Again, on the yin side only. Okay, that's all for now. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Mom Lin. Now we come to the last topic for today. Still on chronic fatigue syndrome. Summary. Okay, uh, so uh, let's define residual pathogenic factor. It occurs after an invasion of wind when the patient appears to recover, but there is a pathogenic factor left over in the interior. 
In the case of chronic fatigue syndrome, many cases are due to residual dampness after a viral infection. In CFS, dampness is typically in three locations. In the head, so causing poor memory and concentration. In the stomach and spleen, digestive problems. In the muscles, muscle ache, fatigue, and heaviness. Latent heat. Under certain circumstances, a pathogenic factor, which may be wind cold or wind heat, can enter the body without causing immediate symptoms. It then incubates inside the body for some time, turning into heat, which later emerges towards the exterior. Clinical manifestations, weary limbs, irritability, insomnia, slight thirst, slight feeling of heat. Lassitude with sudden onset, dark urine, red tongue, rapid fine pulse. Latent heat will also tend to injure qi and or yin, thus establishing a vicious circle of heat and deficiency. The underlying reason for the development of latent heat is usually a kidney deficiency. Another possible cause of latent heat can be immunizations. Lesser yang pattern. Exterior wind heat or wind cold can sometimes lodge itself in an energetic niche, which is in between the interior and exterior. Cold, half exterior, half interior in Chinese. Sometimes exterior wind invades the body through the greater yang stage and then lodges itself in the lesser yang stage. When this happens, the pathogenic factor is trapped between the greater yang and right yang stages. It somehow bounces back and forth between the exterior or greater yang and the interior or bright yang. When it bounces towards the greater yang, the patient experiences aversion to cold. When it bounces back towards the bright yang, the patient feels hot or subjectively hot. The main clinical manifestations of this pattern are feeling hot and cold in alternation, fullness of the hypochondrial region, poor appetite, irritability, dry throat, nausea, bitter taste, blurred vision, white sticky tongue coating on one side only, and a wiry pulse. Thank you very much for joining. We hope to see you again in our next presentation. Thank you.